Hi everyone and welcome to our Zon Academy webinar today. Today's webinar is Press for Time, Speed Up Your Processing Time with GC Lisi Press. Our speaker is Vaughn Groh, owner of Experience Dental Studio. Thanks again for being here with us, Vaughn. Just a few no problem. Uh, Yes, thank you. And just a few housekeeping items to go over before we get started. Um, if you have any questions, please type them into the chat box and we will address them at the end of the webinar. And we are offering CDE credits based on your CDT number provided during the registration process. So now I'll turn it over to you, Vaughn. All right, thanks a lot. And thanks everybody for coming. <clears throat> Excuse me, got to get ready to speak for 45 minutes or an hour. Um, yeah, thank you to Zon and thank you GC for having me today and for everybody for coming. Uh, it's been about a year since I've done anything. I think my last thing was I spoke for GC in Spanish at um, Lab Day, Chicago. That was the last thing. So then COVID hit, as you all know, and that's where we went from there. So anyway, um, yeah, I'm excited to talk about this topic um, with you all. Um, I've kind of been introduced, um, many of you may know me already, um, but basically I started in this business in 1995. I worked for my uncle's denture lab for five years. Then I moved up to Utah and I started working at Utah Valley Dental Lab in 2006 or so um, one of the owners of utah valley dental lab and i broke off and we started experience dental studio and from there i broke off and did my own thing for a while that was dark horse dental studio for five years or so and then i came back to experience and partnered back up with mark and so i'm happy to be there super happy to be back it felt like i was coming back home and um, my life's been great since i've been there so I'm really happy about that. I am an official member of the DTG. Um, it's the Dental Technicians Guild, and we're just uh, a group of um, dental technicians that um, support high quality handmade craftsmanship, and we celebrate um, um, teeth that look like teeth, um, restorations that look like teeth, and we share that uh, with each other, and we try to raise the bar of dentistry together as um, a dental family. So that's that. Um, this is Utah where I live. A brief, this is just going through some introductions for sure. This is where I live. I love where I live. I don't live here in the canyon where, where the Red Rock is. This is Southern Utah, but um, we love to spend time down there when we can. Um, this is more close to where I live. This is actually 10 minutes from where I live. Um, Bridal Veil Falls, um, just through Provo Canyon. And I live in Orem, which is just the city north of Provo. So about 40 minutes south of Salt Lake. Um, this is Mount Timpanogos, one of the highest mountains here in Utah. And it's very close to our house as well. And we like to go through drives in the canyon. So we saw this one day and I had to stop and take a picture. And literally, I think that's just an iPhone photo. But I mean, just amazing scenery. You couldn't even imagine. Um, this is my family. Um, this is the, our most recent photos that we took last year. Um, that's my wife, of course, with me. And then my, from oldest to youngest, my son Cash and Sawyer and Hawk and Rogue. So um, we love to do stuff as a family. And basically these people are the reason I live. It's not Lissy Press, I'm sorry to say, but <laughs> you guys understand. Okay, so I know we've gone through this really crazy time and um, everybody was in quarantine or has been in quarantine and a lot of it's not been fun but um, when i was out of work for a month when <laughs> all of the dentist office shut down um, here's one of the things that we did
yeah. So anyway, um, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that because I enjoy it every time I watch it um, <clears throat> and remember filming it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was thinking about this topic, everyone. I was thinking about this pressed for time, right? It's kind of a play on words. I know we're talking about press, um, Lissy press, right? But pressed for time. And I th kept thinking about time, time, time. And honestly, you have to ask yourself, what do you want to spend your time doing? And for me, these are the people that I want to spend my time with. This is what I want to do with my time. So I would love to go to work and make the best use of my time there so that I can get back to what I really want to spend my time doing. Because as much as I enjoy my job, it's not the first thing that I would choose to be doing. So um, I surround myself with these people. I Everything I do is pretty much for them, with them. It's just, I do have some hobbies aside from this, but um, basically that's the question is, what is your time worth? And if there was a product that could speed up your time, um, for you to get your work done faster, would that be interesting to you? So um, I always start with a little bit of this, that's not gonna be extensive, but the question is what is the most important tool in your lab? And I always share this, I'm gonna submit to you that it's this, it's this um, DSLR camera and the knowledge of, of knowing how to use it. And the reason I bring this up in my lectures is because, well, first of all, I wouldn't be able to show you any of um, my presentation today if it wasn't for photography, but it's such a great communication tool. And if you have issues at the lab, it's a great communication tool for your doctors so that you could send them the information, really high quality. I mean, you guys know a lot of what we do is very detailed. So you need a camera that can take a macro shot of something very detailed and um, save yourself some time talking about timing, that time is going to be uh, a, um, a theme throughout this whole thing. But you basically can save yourself some time by sharing exactly what you're seeing with your doctor instead of trying to explain it to him over the phone. So my first um, photography course, I was already taking some pictures, but I was just kind of winging it, um, was with um, Bill Murray in Las Vegas. And I went down there and really started to learn how to use my camera. and. Um, from there, I just started taking all kinds of shots. You guys have seen these lip shots a lot. They're kind of outdated now, right? Um, maybe not, they still look awesome. Um, but you know, just ordinary things that I'd never taken macro shots of. And once I started to do that, I always quiz people, what is this? If you had to guess, what is this? So it's an avocado, but you know, looking at it like this, it's like you have could be on an alien planet or something like that. But um, again, I bring up this the photography issue because you can start to do all kinds of um, things with it, like I did. I started to make these basically memes, if you will, before there was memes, now they're called memes, but um, you can put collages and stuff together like this and make a presentation. And as you all know, we're basically, a huge part of the way we communicate now is online, social media, Instagram, Facebook, <clears throat> Twitter. So um, if you have um, a way to take these kinds of photos, you really can um, you know, get yourself out there. I mean, it's marketing, let's be honest. I mean, I've been called by many doctors asking about the veneers that I do and, and based off of photos they've seen that I've posted. So, and maybe some of you have experienced that too. So, I mean, yes. Um, it's a great way to show what you can do. This is actually from a course, J.A. Pamploma at the, um, the GC uh, training facility. But um, what a great uh, tool that you can have to share collages like this. Some people don't really know what platinum foil veneers are. So in a collage like this, they can see the platinum foil up there. Then it goes, you know, the ceramic gets built and then the foil is removed and you see the veneers there. But so I began to just play with these concepts and, and kind of it really took off and other people started doing it too. And we watermark the damaged goods on there and stuff like that. Um, this was a, a presentation I sent a doctor asked for pictures of the wax. So I sent him this and he was just like surprised that, you know, that, that um, he got such like a presentation, you know, he was expecting just maybe an iPhone photo of the wax, but you send him something like this, it's really impressive. They get the sense that you're a professional and that you um, 
really care about the work that you're doing for them. So anyway, again, um, I wanted to point out that kind of really what I'm known for, if anything, are these veneers, which we're not going to be talking about today. <laughs> but I specialize in doing these veneers, um, and I use the, the GC initial MC on platinum foil, um, as many of you know. But what I wanted to show, too, that I'm also a versatile um, type of technician, and I can also do, I also use quite a bit of the Lissy Press as well. So not all situations can be minimally invasive and or you know non-prep cases like that where I can do my thing. So we're gonna talk about, let's dive into initial Lissy Press. Um, and you, you might have heard this or not with HDM technology. I have a hard time saying micronization. Micronization, that's how you say it. Okay, but we're gonna talk about what that is because seriously, Lissy Press, what's the big deal, right? Like people say, ah, oh, you know, Emacs, uh, you know, there's all kinds of lithium disilicates. What's the big deal with with Lissy Press? So um, basically, here are some some features and benefits. Okay, um, unparalleled aesthetics, flexural strength is really good, rich, warm, and bright colors. Um, I'm only going to be taking a few of these because we don't have a lot of time um, to talk about. There's so much information I could give you guys <laughs> um, on on Lissy Press, um, but we don't have time for all of it. So I want to talk about virtually no reaction layer, um, it being proven with um, the Lissy veneering ceramic and the initial um, the luster paste, and also spectrum stains, which not is not on here either, um, and a couple of other things. So, but basically, you can read there the some of the benefits that that come with this uh, material. Basically, in a nutshell, if someone asks you what uh, is one of the biggest differences and what you can explain to your doctors. Because to be honest, I've had a lot of doctors in the past two, three months who've called asking about Lissy Press, whereas before it didn't seem like they knew anything about it. When I would talk to them, I'd say, oh, I'm gonna, how about we do Lissy Press? And they'd be like, what's that? And I think there's still a lot of doctors out there that don't know what it is. So basically what you can say, and then if you do tell them what it is, they say, well, why not just use Emacs? So here we're gonna try to talk about some of the differences there. And basically um, lithium disilicate is a crystal. It's crystal that they put inside of a glass matrix as you're seeing here, okay? Um, basically what GC has done in their extensive research and development is they've made the lithium disilicate crystals fine like smaller so because they're smaller as you can see um, afterwards if there is any chipping or abrasion or anything like that it happens more with other brands because of the big crystal size the lithium disilicate crystal size so basically um, the crystals are finer which makes it uh, more compact and it also um, protects against that chipping that's one easy fact that you can say is it has a finer crystal structure. Um, this is Dan Boskasevic, whom I love. Uh, him and I have been through a lot together. And we, back in the day when I started the Dental Technicians Guild, um, I had ideas of where I wanted to go, but wasn't really sure how to get there. And I ran into Dan, ended up giving me a call one day and he had a vision and I had a vision and, um, He's the senior marketing director um, of labs there for GC. And so many of you may know him as well, um, but uh, just an awesome guy. He right away was just like, hey, have you ever used GC before? And I hadn't. So I'm like, yeah, I'm like, is this, what is this? Is this like a sales call or something? I didn't really know what was going on um, until I heard what he wanted to do. And our visions kind of really lined up. He was looking to start kind of what we called a bones brigade, if you guys know skating at all of technicians that could um, use this product and, and continue to do what we were doing. So basically Dan um, gave us a, a way on, especially in the early days of the Dental Technicians Guild to um, have a platform to, be, to go out, to lecture, to show some of the great work that, that we were doing. And um, it really was a good synergy. It worked really well. And so I really appreciate Dan besides that. He's just a good friend. We've had a lot of long talks together. But so if um, you might um, find yourself dealing with Dan on some uh, some accounts um, 
He won't sell you the porcelain directly. That's why we're doing this for Zon. You want to go to Zon for that. Um, but what was really cool is Dan then a couple, I don't know when it was exactly. Oh, I lost one of my earpieces. Um, I don't know when it was exactly, but I was privileged enough to be able to um, test out Lissy Press for the first time. It was actually really exciting. We had a meeting about it at Lab Day West. Um, and then these vials of these random, like these ingots showed up, you know? Um, and it was really cool. I still, I'm showing a picture because I still have them to this day. Uh, they weren't labeled like they are now. They were just literally trial, as you see, trial products, press ceramic ingot. So I, I was um, happy to be able to test this out, be one of the first people um, along with a select other few. Um, so we started testing it because we heard things like there's no reaction layer and stuff like that, which we're gonna talk about. But literally, you guys, th these were the first pressings that I did right out of the investment, um, super clean. Like I had never seen it before. I was like waiting to see if this was could be real or whatever, but literally, uh, and anybody that's used it, you can see that how smooth and clean those are. Um, this was another picture that I took to show, um, I used the SR liquid on the left. And on the right, I didn't use any, and there was still not a lot of reaction layer. You all know on the inside, on the intaglio surface, there's more um, reaction layer. But um, I mean, I was just like, what? This was the very first pressings. I thought, oh, for sure, we're going to probably mispress some. We're going to, but I followed the instructions, and um, that's what we were getting. So again, this is from, you know, uh, another example you can see but i wanted you guys to see it straight from me it's not from a catalog or a brochure literally those were the first pressings and i took photos of them um and then also um just checking other things like marginal integrity um so i split it up into categories and and check the marginal fit and there's also a reason for that kind of like what we talked about before you can see here that there's ideal mar marginal integrity because of the the strength, again, because of those finer um, crystals, um, it's not going to, you know, it's not as prone to chipping um, and abrasion. So, yeah, I was happy with that, too. And then, of course, just overall, I, I shaded a few of them. You know, I pressed it out of A2, and then I shaded it. Uh, I didn't really have to do much shading, but you can see I put the tab in there to show. These were some of the very first Lissy Press units that were pressed in North America. I have to say that for sure, because Europe always has everything first. We won't go into that. We won't get into that. But um, anyway, so yeah. So the things that the way you dress these up once they're pressed is they they of course GC has the luster paste, and um, again, what's not on here is um, and sorry that for layering they have the um, the um, layering porcelain uh, that's here. And then um, they also have spectrum stains, which I know probably is not super popular, but I kind of really got into it. And the cases I'm going to show you today are going to be with luster paste and um, spectrum stains. So again, here are the kits. That's the spectrum stain over there. And it comes with that color wheel like this. And they just say SPS for all. <laughs> and then they're numbered. So everything's SPS 16 or SPS 8 or whatever. So that's what you're going to see when I'm showing you. And then I also really like the Mio system. So I, I want to show the versatility as well, because you can also don't let you using a different stain and glaze system affect you getting Lissy Press. OK. Um, OK, so first case I want to I'm just going to go through some cases and then I'm going to interject interject with some um, slides that are informational as well. So we get a little bit of, of a mix in there. OK, so um, again, I had just gotten Lissy Press. And I was um, tr wanted to try it on a case. So this case is not ideal. Um, I don't in believe in showing always perfect cases. You know what I mean? But this lady came in like this and had these really wide laterals because her centrals are butterflied out um, really bad. So the distals are kicked out and it left a really wide space for her laterals. So these are the temporaries. She came in. I took a shade. Um, she wanted uh, basically the same. Um, shape and size as these laterals. So I'm looking at her teeth though. I'm more like, what am I going to do? You want to match 
you know, these centrals and like I was looking at the colors in there and all the cracks and all these crazy stuff. Then we got to this, right? Where I'm going, I don't know what's going to block this out, you know, maybe some zirconia. Um, but I thought, you know what, let's give this, um, let's just see what, what the block out power is of the, of the Lissy. So um, here's me with the Lissy press ingots. I think it was a, I want to say it was like a brighter shade, like a bleach shade actually, but then I had to stain it down, you know, and try to match these. So she came in once for a, for me to hold these up and see um, how close I was. And then basically we ended up with this, but I want you to remember how black that stump was and how we were able to cover it with just a, I think this is a MT, it's not even an LT ingot, it's an MT ingot. So um, we really got a good match. She got the, what she was looking for. Um, obviously the tissue is really high. I mean, you guys can see all the aesthetic issues, but she, you know, you cover up what she was showing just the bottom half and she was, loved it. And I was able to use just stains and glazes on, on this to make this case work. So, and then um, here's a very simple case, just two Lissy Press Centrals with um, Lance Timmerman. Some of you guys know him, but um, this patient had a lot of composite and had some discoloring underneath. And again, just with, um, I think this is the MTB1. Um, but I mean, look, we're, I mean, there's no sign of any color underneath. It matched really well. Um, this was a great case for the patient. They just loved it after having this for so long. Um, yellowish centrals, as you guys know, your your eye goes right to that. So they were really happy with that. Um, this the Lissy Press is available in four translucencies. So you have your HT, your MT, your LT. This might sound familiar to you, um, but basically the I use mostly MT because I like that you can stain it. The indications for MT is you can stain it or you can cut it back and layer it if you need to. And I figure, I find that it has a really nice, that that works the best in most cases for me. Um, I have used the HT in cases where it literally is just um, enamel replacement. So you just have some minimal prepping or, um, and they have good color underneath. Um, I use that. The LT is good for some block out plus layering. And then the MO, you can do a full layering. And, but what's great about MO is the fluorescence underneath. So you have a really fluorescent core and then you can you know, build all the way out. But basically, um, yeah, those are, that's that. And then the shade selection is pretty simple. Um, it's just pretty much everything you need right there. Um, and it's growing and we're gonna talk about that. There's some new, but I found this to be the most helpful, the shade comparison table. And you're welcome to take, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I don't know if you're taking pictures or not, so I can't stop you. But basically, so I don't know if you could get in trouble for that. Um, I don't think it's proprietary uh, information. Um, I think they would want you to have this, but basically this is a comparison with the Shofu and Ivoclar and how it's a conversion table so that you can, things that you're used to using maybe and you're making the switch over, or you're just trying GC, you can use this table as a conversion. And I, I used it a lot until I got used to a, all of the, the ingots that I was using. So, um, okay, so here's another GC Lissy press case with um, luster paste and the spectrum stains. This lady was an 80 year old woman and she wanted to replace her centrals. Um, she had some composite uh, bonding and um, some severe wear going on and stuff like that. So um, at first we were just doing the two centrals but we ended up doing the one lateral as well that lateral, you can see there, number seven with um, that composite on there. She ended up doing that later, but at this point we were just doing the two centrals. Good um, communication. Again, the photography comes into play here, saves us a lot of time. Um, and this was the first try. So even based off of his photos, I had them on the stumps and I shaded it down. And this is, was the try in in the mouth, which we totally missed the mark. Um, on the color, I missed the mark on the color. So what's great is he puts them in, does a try-in, takes some photos with shade tabs to show me again, like here, you have this much further to go. I love that he did that because as soon as he does that, I can, and then he's telling me we're gonna do this lateral too. So they, it all came back prepped. Um, this was just some of the staining, I mean the crowns in the lab, just some lab photos. 
and we got it right the second time. She was very happy with this. Um, I never really liked the straight incisal edge, but um, that's what she wanted. And also we partially did it to try to clear those lowers a little bit more to have a, a bevel on that um, on the lingual to have her right up on those lowers better than she was before. Um, here's another profile view and here's a close up. And you could see that lateral turned out really well. Um, somehow I was able to manage to to match her um, surrounding dentition because you can see it's very difficult. There's some grades in there. There's, I think I have a diagram on here. And here's another close up shot. Um, but yeah, so there's her before, here's her after, and here's what I used, okay? So I usually use the luster paste um, for the base shade. So I, I use the LC for the, the base shade here um, to get the gingival color. And then I use some of the spectrum stainings, like for in between the um, interproximal there, up there by the gingiva, and um, some white cracks and um, some blue up there um, at the incisal. So yeah, that was a um, okay. So prep design. So a lot of these questions are not questions that you guys have. They're questions that the doctors are going to ask you. How should I prep this for Lissy Press? And basically, it's your standard. Um, prepping that you would do for Emacs or anything else, but this is just some great information if you want to tell them, look, we need one and a half, you know, the indications are one and a half millimeters for posterior. If you do a lot of veneers, you can see it's pretty thin, 0. 0.6 and 0. 0.7 um, on the incisal wrap. So um, yeah, just some information for you if you'd like to take that and you can relay that to, you know, information to your doctors or whoever's asking. So um, here's a single central again with just Lissy Press and Spectrum Stain. Um, this patient came in. This was a difficult color too. I think it's a, you know, I, I zoomed in too much and I can't see that shade tab now, but you guys can see there's a lot of oranges and they have like some white down there. They have a couple streaks in there. I mean, just a lot going on, you know, so you're, you might be thinking, how am I going to, you know, uh, match this tooth? But again, so just a couple of lab photos here. And this was the day of seeding, so you could see the gum is irritated there, but we were able to, just with the spectrum stains and the luster paste, uh, match what this patient has. I mean, I think that's a pretty good match for what he had. Of course, he wanted to keep the diastema and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, for what it is, it's it's just such a great um, a great material to work with, to be honest. Um, Press programs. So I know that's going to be another big question. Here's some of the popular uh, um, press ovens. You can see down at the bottom is the EP600 or the 5000, if you have one of those. Um, I do want to warn you for sure, because we all ran into this when I, especially when I was testing it. Um, this manual is basically giving you a base. This is where you should start at the 903 final temperature. From there, you want to. Um, go up in five degree increments until you really hit that sweet spot and the pressings are coming out really nice and clean. Um, so basically I think we're at 915 where we are, but we're also at elevation. You know, we're in Utah way up in the mountains. Other people are at sea level. So again, I just encourage you to start here on your oven and then go up in five degree increments until you are getting great results. Okay, posteriors need love too, right? all about the interiors usually like everyone's you know doing anteriors looking at anteriors um but uh lissy press of course great for posteriors as well we um, use it a lot for that as well um here's a molar that i waxed up it helps if you um have that skill i know with everything going digital and everything i still think it's so important for anybody any technician to know how to hand wax um you know, contours and stuff like that. And um, so this was a case that I was actually doing waxed up this molar. And here's the, the finished product with the luster paste and spectrum stains. Again, I use the blue, the uh, 12 SPS, and then the nine is like a, I think it's like a khaki color down in there and to kind of warm up the occlusal in the fossa there. And then um, kind of the same thing I kind of use the same thing for a lot of the molars is what I'm trying to say, I guess. 
Um, so yeah, here's just another quick example of a of a premolar, right? But um, with this, you know, with this system, you really can do that. It's your choice, but you can really choose to try to make these teeth come to life and not just be like a product or, you know, an object or something that goes in the mouth. Um, here's a couple of centrals that I did with Sonny Oliva. If you guys don't know Sonny Oliva, he's really such a great guy. He's in New York. His um, dad was a technician, so he has a love for technician work and he loves technicians in general. Um, and um, he likes to dabble in it as well. So sometimes he'll have a technician or two come into his practice and actually do a course for him and his staff. He actually invited me um, last, I was gonna do the Greater New York Dental Meeting, which um, kind of fell through because of COVID and everything like that, but he was gonna have me come at that time and I'm sure we'll do it in the future. But um, here's a case that we did together. Um, this, I think I pressed out of a, I think it was a B1 again. So the MT B1, I'm, again, I'm usually working with the MTs. Um, so basically here's a couple of the lab shots. And then here's him doing the, you know, the glory shot that dentists do sometimes where they're like getting inserted, but they're not quite there yet, you know? Um, but here you can see how well um, it integrated in with the surrounding dentition. If you look at that lateral and then look over at the gingival there. Um, and again, that's great dentistry coupled with a great dental product, right? Um, so yeah, just some of the same stuff, just, just kind of, used photo communication, because obviously he's in New York, but a lot of us work this way, you know, we just have to have really good communication and have good um, references there. Um, so yeah, I was really happy with this case and we were able to get um, a good match and get some of those weird grays and like white stain in there. So here it is again, the kind of the diagram. I just used the the LA1 as the base and kind of got the, the orange and, and warmed up the gingival there. And then um, just the one SPS there for the white and then the 16 SPS, some blue. And I, there was also some gray in there. So you just kind of have to play around. And you know, this was a one shot deal, which I was really surprised because usually it comes back like the other case that we saw at least one time um, for me to change something, you know, you know, put a little more stain here and there, that kind of thing. But once you work with the material a lot, you'll get more and more used to it. Um, this is sunny. We had a great time when I was, this was 2019 when I came to <laughs> Greater New York Dental Meeting. He was very gracious, took me around New York a little bit, so that was fun. Okay, we're going to talk also a little bit about the pressed vest, because this also has to do with what saves you time if you're pressed for time. Um, so basically, here's how the they show how it comes packaged. The regular packaging is probably what you're, unless you get an introduction kit. Um, basically there's um, all the stuff that it comes with there and the SR liquid is important. We're gonna go over that, um, what that is, has to do with the reaction layer. So here's some of the features that are great about the press vest. It's easy to remove the reaction layer, high fluidity, long working time and stable setting time. So basically what's cool about this is it has this short setting time of 20 minutes, and, but then the time for it to go from the, after it's set up to the oven is, can be very long, 20 minutes to three hours after pouring um, the investment. So what that does is that can allow you to do more rings. It can, I mean, it can save you a lot of time by taking more time. Does that make sense? <laughs> Depending on what you're doing. Some people have a big pressing room, with a lot of ovens, they're doing, you know, pressing different materials, they're pressing. So that can be very helpful. Um, whereas if it's a very short time and you have to get it in the oven right now, you may not be able to do anything else. You have to just stand there and wait or um, for to do, you know, stand there and wait and focus on the one thing. Um, so what is a reaction layer? We always hear reaction layers, reaction layers, right? It's um, a reaction between softened glass and the investments, it gets obviously stuck in there, right? So there's traditional ways to remove it. Um, it's hydrofluoric acid solution or Invex liquid, um, then followed by um, alumina blasting. So that's the way to remove a reaction layer. The 
uh, again, the cool thing about the Lissy Press vest is that there is less reaction layer and it's very easy to remove whatever is left on there. And if you haven't tried it yet, you really should try it so you could see for yourself the difference because there really is a huge um, difference there. So again, comes out with close to no reaction layer. Um, again, here's a side by side here. Um, you guys can see and you'll see it in person if you do it. So here we come now to press for time, some uh, more time saving. Um, the time saving here is about 15 to 20 minutes if you take out hydrofluoric acid and alumina blasting. So um, that's basically where you can um, save some time there. And again, if you care about time as much as I do, I'll be honest, when I come into work, I first of all have looked at what I'm doing the day before. So all that stuff's ready for me to go. I prioritize my time. I mean, to the T. I'm never sitting around like laughing, talking with somebody if I'm not actively doing my work in some way. I never, you just won't see me doing that at work. That's not me. I prioritize my work. I want to get it done. Um, I actually challenge myself like, look, if this is in the oven right now, what can I be doing in between that would prepare me for the next step? And that's not everybody works that way. That's just me. But that's why I can appreciate something like this. If I can save 15 or 20 minutes, um, that's that's huge for me. So anyway, um, I told you guys about the, the Mio. Um, I know that's a popular product. We use it too a lot um, for different things. And every case is different and indications are different. And of course, it's a case by case basis. But I just wanted again to just show you versatility. This is Lissy Press bleach shade with just a little bit of blue. You guys know things are different for us. And that's one of the reasons we had to test Lissy Press in the US market is because, um, you know, our our clientele want different things than in Europe and then in the Asian countries and stuff like that. So um, that was important for us to say, hey, we do a lot of bleach cases, you know. So this is just a little bit of Mio staining just to, you know, it was a bright bleach shade BL2 and they just wanted a little bit of blue at the incisal. That was like, a lot of times we get lab slips like that. So again, what's really important is form and contour. That's really going to make the case. But then of course you have to stain and glaze it and try to bring it to life as much, much as you can. Here's another case. This is just Mio staining and, and Lissy Press. So and you can get very, very much similar results of you, as you have seen um, with the luster paste and spectrum staining um, as well. So again, just some cool shots of, of lab. These are real cases from my lab. They're not like to try to get cool pictures or whatever. Um, just wanted to share those with you. Um, then of course, larger cases. Here's just a six unit veneer case that went off without a hitch. The patient was really really happy with this and as you can see they have a lot of stuff to get done on the lower as well but if you look at just this is just lissy press stain and glaze and with joshua hong he's a cool guy too um here's a full arch case um you guys got to look at this case when it came to me i was like whoa he's basically ground off he's his teeth are just nubs and you can see from that profile picture especially um, what, you know, him from the profile, uh, what that's doing to his, his jawline and stuff like that, you can see, right? So um, went and did this uh, full arch. We did the upper first. So I went ahead and did this um, full arch, layered the, the front six. And you can, I mean, it's so crazy. If you guys think about what we do, it's like just life-changing, you know? I, I don't have to say that to you guys. I mean, you guys know, but when you have a chance to get to see what it did for the person, you kind of get reminded again of like how thankful you are for your job that you get to um, affect other people's lives in this way. This was so huge for him, you know, just looking at his smile and everything. Look at his lip line. I mean, his lips, how thin they are. And, you know, they're still kind of thin here. But but I think like, um, again, it's very psychological. What I've learned, too, is how, um, you know, sometimes people are tight lipped like that because they they are keeping their mouth closed. They don't ever want to open their mouth because they're so self-conscious of 
you know, their teeth and everything. And now to just let everything go, their lips seem more fuller. They're like obviously happier. And we did end up doing the lowers, but um, for some reason I couldn't find the lower pictures of that, but that ended up being pretty much a full mouth. Okay, so back to the press vests again, just doing cases and then throwing stuff in there. Um, the reason it separates so well too, um, we're gonna talk about that, but it, it basically has a special, I don't know if this is a proprietary, some kind of secret or whatever, because it's basically explained like that. It has a special separation capacity. Um, so it makes the layer, the, the reaction layer, like a, a layer in between the ceramic and the, the investment. So basically here's a side-by-side, -side, um, the unique release agent. Um, and then there's this SR liquid too that we're, I have a slide for that too to show you. But basically what's happening here is you're seeing that investment get all like jammed in and like um, to the, the surface of the Emacs there. And that's why you have that reaction layer. And if you look at the Lissy Press testing, um, there's almost kind of what they're calling a tear off line. That's where the material is and where you've sprayed this um, SR liquid as well. Um, that also helps release that investment from the material. Um, and after glass beads, you can see how clean it is, um, how clean. And that's what you're seeing um, when you see the real pictures, why they're so clean like that. So again, this is something you do when you have the wax pattern, you squirt this, you spray this SR liquid um, into the inside of the crown um, where there's generally like a stronger reaction layer. So if you do that, you'll even get cleaner pressings inside the crown as well as the outside. So that SR liquid comes with a kit and you can reorder and I'm sure Zom has everything that you need there. Um, so with the investment, the high fluidity and long working time, it also has a long working time <clears throat> wet, um, wet when you mix it up, okay? So, you know, if it's saying, have you ever experienced this where all of a sudden it's clumpy and it's set up on you before it, you were ready? Um, basically, it, it stays um, liquid longer so that there's just more working time there when you're pouring the investment. And then we talked about this, but um, there's a 20 to 180 minute window there when you can put that that's the time that you have to put them in the burnout oven. So that I know that's a longer time, but 20 minutes is shorter than you know the I, the the Emacs the press vest down there. So you have a shorter amount of time if you really want to get it in there faster, and you have a longer amount of time if you want to pour you know get more rings going or whatever for it to sit there before you put it in. You can still have good pressings. So again, savings of time. Um, also, just showing here that it's that the material is robust. You don't need as much time in the wall. I mean, as much time. You don't need as much thickness on the walls there of your um, investment rings as you do with other with the Emacs. Okay, so here's I think one last case here. This is the cases get bigger and bigger. Um, this is like a full mouth case. I think there was an implant going in there on that side there where you're seeing the stone tooth. Um, so I think we did that later, but basically we did that. Here's the lowers being made. Again, just putting that, trying to bring the teeth to life using the, you know, the translucent um, stains and trying to get, um, you know, something in the fossa there to warm it up, make it look good. And then these are the doctor's photos, I think maybe a week or two after, but I mean, just a whole case and the case is still doing great of Lissy Press. So you can see, um, that there. So basically, um, in conclusion, I just wanted to say this sums it up here for me. Um, oh shoot, and this I can't read the whole thing. Basically, it's it's um, best of all, it's faster. It's a faster process. It's optimized to be used with Lissy veneer ceramic and leave virtually no reaction layer, making your laboratory more productive. So isn't that what we all want? I'm just saying, if you're pressed for time. And you know, you know, you have a product like Emacs that takes a little bit more time. It has that reaction later. It's more porous. Um, I'm not slamming Emacs, you guys. I'm really not, um, because I've done a lot of great Emacs cases, and I know there's artists out there that can just kill it with Emacs. So it's not about that trying to say, well, this this looks better or this and that. But there are some things that I feel like in their research and development, 
GC really went to town on trying to correct things or complaints that people had about other products. Um, and they did just such a good job. Sean Yurata is like a good friend of mine whenever I see him anyway. He lives in Japan, so it's not like we're good buddies. But um, he works there in the R&D department, or he did. And so we had a lot of um, conversation and we had meetings with him on that on and just they are just really extensive they really tried to nail the things that were bothering people about um, lithium disilicate so kudos great job um, to gc on that for sure okay wrapping it up here is um a really some awesome news there's some new lissy pressing gets coming out and for what, what i've heard from dan is they're actually in you can order now from zon if you want these so I'm really excited myself to to try the BLE plus and the MTB0 plus because I've done a lot of the B0 cases and B00, not a B0 plus in the MT. And also they're filling in the gaps too, where we just, you know, they had like an A3, but not an A3.5. So now they're really filling in all of those extra shades, which is really exciting um, if you need to get precise. So again, kudos for continuing that to come out with, you know. Uh, the customer's needs on that GC. Um, I don't know if there's any Tolkien fans out there, but there's a point where Gandalf is uh, kind of consoling, comforting um, Frodo, and Frodo says, I wish the ring had never come to me, and he's really down about it, you know, and um, Gandalf then says, um, so do all who live to see such times, such as this pandemic that we're in. Um, but that's not for you to decide. All we have to do is decide what to do with the time that is given to us. And I really love that because that really is all we have to do. <laughs> we can't get time back. We can't do anything about time passing, but we can decide what to do with our time. And do I wanna be at work 24 seven? Should any technician be doing that and risking their health? <laughs> Absolutely not. I know we do it when we have to, but if there was a way to cut down that time and um, really spend less time in the lab and more time with our families and doing things that we want to do, uh, why wouldn't we do that, right? So anyway, not, just one of the reasons I really love Lissy Press. Just want to give a huge thank you again to GC for always supporting me um, through everything and also Zon big time um, for having me on this webinar. So and thank you all for coming. I really appreciate you. And um, yeah, that's basically it. I think we're supposed to open it up to some questions now for the last little bit of time. So are you there, Katie? Yes, I'm here. Um, we okay. have one question that came in. Um, what causes okay. halo at the joint of sprue? Yeah, so um, I honestly, I'm just being honest with you. I haven't seen that with Emacs. I mean, I'm sorry, I haven't seen that with Lissy Press. Emacs, I would see it a lot. Um, and I think it just has to do with the when the the, when the pellet, the ingot is hot and it goes in there and it's being pressed down. It's It cools right there at the, I mean, obviously the mass is down in the crown and the, the little sprue is up on top and that cools faster than the body down here is still really hot and warm. And and the little sprue is sitting up here at top and it cools faster. So where it's joined there to the rest of the body where it was really hot, sometimes it leaves that that spot there. And I guess that can happen with Lissy Press. I'm just telling you, I haven't seen it. Um, I grind sprues off all the time. And so I'm always looking for it. Um, and I think that even with Emacs, you won't be showing, you won't be having that problem a lot um, if you have your parameters right in your pressing ovens and stuff. Awesome, thank you. Um, I think yeah. that is the only question that has come in so far, but we can wait another minute or so to see if anyone yeah, sure. piped up. So yeah, so I had this whole presentation, which has tons of information, all these graphs and charts. So I, I just had it ready to go after my lecture. So if someone asked me a question, I could just take you to a chart, you know, like here's the high, showing the higher flexural strength. And so flexural strength is important because it actually is talking about when things push against it, when they abrade, when it's getting pressure, that's the flexural strength. So if it has a really high showing here, 450 megapascals, 
um, it's it's very strong in its flexural strength, which is the most important because when the crowns get put in the mouth, they're of course used for chewing and you know there's there's a lot of movement in there. Um, color stability after repeated firing, that's another really cool thing. You can fire these things a lot of times. I've I've actually done this test because I wanted to see, and, and this is after I'm, I'm talking you layered the the layering ceramic on there and fired it over and over and over again to see if it would, what would happen, does it change, does it um, do all of the layering porcelains melt together and just become like a gray mass or what happens, but literally it's, it, it doesn't do that. And you can just try it for yourself. I mean, I better than trying to show you a graph or a chart, which I'm not really that kind of a person anyway, but I know that this webinar was a little bit more informational, so I wanted to, um, you know, throw some of these in there and talk about them. Um, wear resistance, this, these are just, you know, tests that were done on wear resistance. So you can show it actually has lower wear than other products. Um, so Fon, anyway, I think did something else come up? Yes, we have a few more questions. So- Oh, cool, okay. Someone asked, um, I never had a problem with Lisi, but lately I've had a problem with Emacs a crack from a ceramic to crown, what could cause such a problem? Um, a lot of things could cause that problem. Um, it, it could be that you're layering, you know, you're not layering the right porcelain on there. The CTE, the, the coefficient is incorrect, which means it's not the right porcelain that you should be layering on that surface. Um, it could be, um, quick cooling like there's a lot of you're you're layering a lot of porcelain and when the oven opens it's cooling down too fast you need a longer cooling program sometimes when that cold air hits that crown after you've layered it it'll it'll crack where you've where you've added on uh and a, a myriad of other reasons that that could be okay great um one other question are they going to come out with multi-layer line like least for Lisi, like Emacs Multi? That is a great question. That is a really great question. I'm not sure about that, but I, and I don't know if I should be saying this, but let's just say some blocks showed up at our lab. So <laughs> they do have mil blocks for milling. Um, we're working on getting a mill that's an open system because right now we're locked into, um, we're not able to do it because our, our mills are not open systems. So, um, but um, so I could tell you, they probably are definitely going to come out with something really cool. And again, it's probably in the R&D right now, and it's going to come out bigger and better than anything out there. That's just the way GC likes to do it. So I'd say, yes, they are going to come out with something like that if they haven't already. OK, awesome. Um, how often do you layer anterior anteriors and are you using the Lisi layer material? Yeah, I'm absolutely using the Lisi layer material and um, it's great because I use, like I told you, I do a lot of the foil veneers, which are is full layering. There is no substructure like Lisi press. And a lot of the, the powders are the same for that as it is for the Lisi press layering system. So the colors are, are very similar and, and stuff like that. So yes, and how often do I do it? Pretty much every day. Our rule at our, our, at our lab is we cut back unless there's a reason not to cut back. And then the doctors specify on the lab slip how much they want. Do they want a millimeter? You know, we call it minimal, um, moderate, and then, you know, maximum amount of, of, and so that usually we just do that by, you know, we do like a millimeter or two millimeters or, you know, um, it can be more than that. So we can get as aggressive as we want with it, but I do it every day unless there's a reason not to, like there's no room to cut it back or something like that. But yes, I love the, the layering system and I know I didn't spend a lot of time on that. I just wanted to show um, quickly how, how fast this system could be and how, how you could use it, you know, to, to maximize your productivity, so. Okay, great. And then one other question, what is your pressing temp and time for Lisi Press? Yeah, so I think what I said when I showed that slide is we're at 915. Um, but again, I, it really doesn't do a whole lot for me to tell you my pressing schedule because 
You have to take the pricing schedule from the manual and then make adjustments as you need to. Normally that's only with the, the high temp. So you start there, I think it said 905 or 903 or something like that. And then you go up in five degree increments until you get to, are getting really great um, pressings with that. So basically that's what I had to do. And we're up to, I think 915, like I said, for high temp. And I can't remember the hold time. We might've adjusted that a little bit too. But um, so basically, yeah, I mean, everybody wants to grab the manual. They want a manual for everything and they want to just the manual to tell them exactly and then it to be perfect. And if it doesn't happen, they get frustrated and then they just go, well, Lissy Press doesn't work. But basically you you have to do some of that. You have to take it the rest of the way with um, you know doing a few things yourself. And that's what was suggested to me. And when I got to 9.15, it was, they were coming out killers. So I just left it there. Okay, perfect. And then we also have one asking if layering, do you use do you use stains internally first, then layer over them? Miso has a higher temp than Lacy layer. Yeah. So um I do do both ways. I normally just will will I guess the way I do it that I prefer is I just cut back the ceramic and then I just I don't do internal stainings. I just use the, you know, the the powders that are available to me and I, I do it that way. Um, but I have also done sometimes when there's not room to do a full cutback, I'll just cut back the facial, I'll do the staining, um, internal staining, um, and then I'll just go ahead and layer the, the facial of it. So that works um, really well when when you need it. Awesome. Okay. So we also had another question about the replay. Um, we are going to have this on the Zon Dental YouTube within the next, I would say, 24 hours. So be on the lookout for that. And okay. that is about it for the questions. Uh, really appreciate your presentation, Vaughn. Great stuff. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Of course. Yeah, anytime. Thanks for having me. Thanks, everybody, for coming. I can't see you, but I'd like to say it's good to see you, but I, that would be a lie. So <laughs> right. I hope it was good to see me. <laughs> yes, always good to see you, Vaughn. Okay. Thanks so much. Awesome. Have a great day, everyone. Okay.